Here's a question for couples who are childless who'd love to have their own child. Are there babies to adopt? Well, according to our next guest, the internet has revolutionized the adoption process. And she is a nationally recognized expert on adoption. So let's say hello now to Nicole Witt. Hi, how are you? I'm great, Dan. How are you today? Good. How hard is it to find a baby these days if you want to adopt? It is not nearly as difficult as people think it is. That's a big myth that it takes years to adopt a healthy newborn. And it's just not true. There are plenty of babies out there um, that are available for adoption. And it, it depends on sort of what you're open to or what some of your parameters are. But, you know, people can adopt very quickly. On average, my clients adopt in about six months, healthy newborn babies. Now, um, at one time, a lot of couples were going overseas. They were adopting babies from China or Central Asia. Uh, I know of someone through a friend who recently adopted a baby from one of the former Soviet republics in Central Asia. Mm -hmm. That's rather expensive, isn't it? It's, it's very expensive. It's more expensive on average than domestic adoption. And uh, there have been a lot of changes with international adoption over the last couple of years. So it, it's more difficult on average. It's, it's a lengthier wait time. For instance, China these days, the wait time is running close to four years. Um, you know, so it, it's not a feasible option for as many people as it used to be. Now, tell us how the Internet has revolutionized the adoption process. Well, the, the Internet has, has affected it in so many different ways. From, you know, when you're talking about international adoption, you do have to travel over to those countries. A lot of times it was a very isolating experience. So now even just being able to stay in contact with friends and family, to share pictures and videos, um, it, you know, it can make the international adoption experience um, much more um, sort of personable, you know, <laughs> sort of less less feeling alone while you're out there. But it's also had a big effect on domestic adoption. You know, it's really helped people to um, to research good agencies and attorneys to work with, to reach out throughout the country rather than just working with their local agencies in case the laws in their local state, you know, aren't particularly protective of them. Um, so it's changed that as well. One of the downsides that it's had is that there are a lot of people um, who search for birth parents online and although that can be effective in many instances that opens people up to um, a lot of uh, less than desirable <laughs> types of people you know there are scammers out there unfortunately and you know the internet is one way that people do tend to get taken when it comes to the adoption process mm -hmm. now what if I'm single, and I'm not looking to get married any time, but I know I'd be a good single parent, and I want a kid. Is, it, is that possible? It is possible, uh, much more so for women than for men, because the birth mother these days chooses the adoptive parents. So there are a good number of birth mothers who are open to single women, especially if they themselves you know, are, have come from a divorced home. You know, they, they want to make sure that their child isn't going to go through that. But there aren't all that many birth mothers who are open to the concept of a single man. There's still kind of a stigma associated with that. So it is more difficult for single men, um, but, but completely possible for single women to adopt. Again, more so domestically. A lot of the, the countries internationally that used to be open to single women are not anymore. And what about age? Do people get turned down because they're a little too old? Um, you know, with international adoption, different countries have different criteria. So there are a lot, most countries do have some sort of age limit. Technically, with domestic adoption, there is no age cutoff. Um, you just have to legally be able to adopt, which means having a valid home study. So again, you know, somebody who's 80 years old, you know, is unlikely to get selected by a birth mother. Um, but, you know, people who, who are in their 40s, who are in their, you know, early 50s, um, you know, get selected all the time. So that doesn't need to be a barrier. And in fact, most people who are looking to adopt are between 30 and 45. So, you know, I, I work with a lot of people in their early 40s, and they're worried that they're too old. But really, they're, they're in, you know, the most typical age range for adopted parents. Mm. That's good news. Because you think about it, 
when somebody chooses to adopt, they're really making a choice themselves. It's not just the, you know, the lottery, you know. You get the right. parents you're born to. I mean, this person or this couple really want to have a child and want to be good parents. Now, before we run out of time, you are the executive director of the Adoption Consultancy. Tell us sure. about that. I'm sorry? I said you're the executive director of the Adoption Consultancy. Tell us about it. The ad- oh, what we do, I tell people that we're kind of like wedding planners for adoption, okay? We help people manage the whole process. Um, we really try to take the stress out of the adoption process for people so they can focus on the joy of it. And, you know, we sort of walk people through the whole process, providing them with the information, the guidance, and the resources that they need. Um, We take a much more proactive approach to adoption than than a lot of people think about taking. Um, And like I mentioned earlier, as a result, on average, our clients adopt within about six months. Um, You know, we help them create really great profiles that, that birth mothers are drawn to and we connect them with multiple reputable agencies and attorneys so that those profiles are getting a lot of exposure to a lot of birth mothers and it really increases their chances of getting selected quickly. I hate to bring this topic up but you really have to. You know, we're going through what's been called the great recession. There are there are couples who want to have a child desperately but right now money's a little tighter than it used to be. Is adoption extremely expensive? Private domestic adoption is expensive. One of the things, interestingly, that I'm seeing with the recession, though, is that it it doesn't seem to be limiting the number of adoptive parents. What I'm seeing is that a lot of people are foregoing expensive infertility treatments earlier than they might and using that money towards more of a sure thing, which is adoption. Um, It is an expensive proposition. Often you're talking about somewhere between... um, Twenty-five to thirty-five thousand hmm. uh, dollars, but there there are sources of help. The most notable being a twelve thousand dollar tax credit, which dollar for dollar can put twelve thousand dollars back in your pocket. So that makes it more within reach for a lot of people. I didn't know there was such a thing. Yes, there is. There is. It's 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 wonderful, and it, it helps a lot of people be able to adopt who otherwise just wouldn't be able to. Gee, they should publicize that fact more. <laughs> oh well, who am I to criticize the government? Um, if they want, if people listening now wanted to get a hold of the uh, adoption consultancy, how do they do that? The best way is online. They can go to www.adoptanewlife.com, or they can reach me by phone at area code eight one three six eight one six two three two. Well, thank you very very much for coming on WDIS. Uh, I just I just like to wish. You know, good luck to every couple that wants a child. And I think you can do a lot to help them. Well, thank you, and thanks for having me on, Dan. Okay, well, take care now. You too. Bye-bye. That was Nicole Witt. She is the executive director of the Adoption Consultancy. And she says there are babies out there to adopt. So perhaps you should check out that website. You're tuned to 1170 AM WDIS. This is Talk of the Town.